From the hinterlands of Canada to the heartland of America, this is Unhinged Reactions. So what do we have today? We have Jonathan Chase. Have you heard of Jonathan Chase? I have not. So there's two, there's two main things I think that make us different from other reaction channels. Uh, one is that we're 50 plus. We've listened to probably most, if not all of the, well, not all, but most of the classics. Yeah. So we have to dig through the mire sometimes to bring each other new things and things right. to watch and react to have a genuine first reaction. I personally think that's the coolest reactions to watch. Right. Um, the other thing is that we're um, seasoned musicians. So we bring that difference and we can um, cut through and analyze certain uh, musical performances and break them down. And so that's a difference. Um, yep. And the other big difference is that you're not autistic and I am autistic. Yes. And uh, so I have Asperger's syndrome, um, a late diagnosis, and, and um, that brings a whole set of challenges to, to the show. Um, and uh, the other reason why I wanted to do this particular reaction is because um, you know, a lot of people don't really know what to make of autism, especially Asperger's when it's high function. It's hard to understand where you can be very functional on one sense and completely not in the other. Right. And one of my fears was doing this show is that, uh, you know, people would not understand that. There's not a lot of awareness uh, for autism like there should be. I've had more than one person say, well, you seem to be doing well because you're doing the show. Yeah. And that's not the truth. So now if, if you nasty. guys all knew all the behind the scenes, what, what goes on before we even produce a show, um, you'd be surprised. There's a lot. Yeah. So, so I thought we would bring some, uh, awareness to autism, but also because, you know, when you have neurodevelopmental, neurodevelopmental and neurological issues, um, like Tourette syndrome, dementia, we've seen that music can literally bring them out yeah. uh, of their dementia shells we've seen these miracle stories or Tourette syndrome they don't tick when they're playing music while they're playing music so right. music is is brilliant so this is from an autism uh, perspective um, and the other reason is we used to jam together a lot as guitar players and I think I believe I see the neck visually differently than you do yeah and that's why I had a lot of sort of savant moments early on in our careers and friendships uh, that you witnessed yeah. Uh, because of how I look at the neck and he'll cover some of that. So this is Jonathan Chase, um, who is a, aut a musician turned autism advocate. Uh, this guy's got talent. So I just thought this would be a really cool thing to watch. It's a TED talk. So it's not watching live music it's called music as a window into the autistic mind. <laughs> in the autism field as a consultant and mentor for young adults, and I've been a working musician since I was 16 years old. When I was 14, I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, which is a form of autism. It happened to be the same year that I got my first bass guitar. These days, I spend more time in the autism world than on stage with bands but I've played hundreds of gigs with dozens of bands, including several trips to Nashville, where I attended camps run by my friend and favorite musician, Victor Wooten. Both musicians and people with autism tend to see things a bit differently. To explore the ways that we think differently, I asked dozens of musicians what they think of when they hear the words C major. Their responses were varied and interesting. All white keys, the people's key, all natural, uncomplicated. My own internal process is a little different. 
When I think of C major, this is what I see. Like many people on the autism spectrum, I am a visual thinker. I see chords, scales, and melodies, not only as sounds, but as shapes. I see my bass as a grid with the strings laid out in lines. When I play a note, a dot appears to mark it on the grid. I see it in the air when I play. I see it when I close my eyes. I even see it when I hear a song on the radio and I imagine how I would play it. Whether I'm playing a simple groove, or a complex pattern, it all starts on my imaginary grid. Going back to C major, the scale lays out across the strings, and I can look at it in note names or in dots. The root note is always circled, because that's the most important note and my reference point no matter what I'm playing. As I play through the scale, I connect each note to the next with an imaginary line, and my scale becomes a shape. Music becomes a game of connect the dots. When I play, I can remove the grid and even the dots, and I see everything in a series of lines. The harmonic minor scale has a different sound and a different shape. I think it sounds pretty cool, too. <laughs> In my mind, I can visualize that the chord tones are green and the extensions are blue. Now my visual scale has both shapes and colors. But when I play, I don't see only the notes I'm playing. I see all the notes I'm not playing, even the ones that aren't in the key. My bass lights up like a Christmas tree, with red dots filling in every chromatic note, which I like to think of as jazz notes. Every time I touch my bass, or even think of it, I see these grids that span the entire instrument and tell me about every note I could possibly play and its relationship to the key. I see shapes in chords as well as scales. When I play a chord, I draw a line from each note to the next, and I create a shape based on its fingering and position on the neck. When I'm on stage with the band, it all comes down to shapes, and that's how I see everything that I play. This is a melody that I wrote, and in my mind, it's a shape as well as a sound. I see that same shape whether I play it slowly or at tempo with the band like this. I am a visual thinker, which is not unique. My musical system isn't unique either. What sets me apart is that I am autistic, and like many people on the autism spectrum, my mental transcription has extra layers and additional steps. The difference between me and other musicians is that they can put the visuals down when they put down their guitar, but many of us carry those extra steps with us everywhere we go. Our minds are filled with layers, extra steps, and detailed analysis 
for even the smallest things. Even having a conversation looks simple from the outside, but in my mind, I'm processing layers of information far more complex than the key of C major. Body language, eye contact, word choice, inflection, all mapped out with the same detail and complexity as a scale on my bass. I played music for over 10 years before I learned that not everyone sees autumn leaves as a bunch of lines. Of course music is shapes. How could anyone hear this melody and not see an upside down triangle? My hope is that when you leave here today, you'll take a moment to look at the people around you and recognize that while you all shared the same experience, everyone has a unique perspective and you can't always see it from the outside. We have a lot of work to do in supporting those who are different and see the world differently. The first step is to recognize the differences between their view and ours. The next step is to respect those differences. We can all take those first two steps when we leave here today. Thank you. That was, uh, that was eye opening. Um, the interesting, the really interesting part to me is that I could follow him all the way up to right when, before he started drawing the lines and making those shapes. Like I think of the fretboard yeah, exactly the like he's talking about right. the patterns, the shapes there. They are shapes in my head. Every time I pick up the guitar and I start playing, I think shapes um, yeah. and, you know, expanding those shapes to cover the entire fretboard is something that, you know, it takes time and practice. Um, but then he goes beyond that assigning, you know, drawing the lines, then doing the colors and, and he sees it all at once and uh, either the, the notes themselves or dots, he can picture where all the roots are. It's a, it's a whole other level. Um, well, he, he took what his divergent brain was translating and, and put it into practice, put it on paper. I never did that, but I do see those shapes differently. Um, almost like somebody who, if you've experienced sort of a psychedelic type of trip, you might see shapes and tubes and, mm -hmm. you know, that's what my brain sees. And, yeah. And so I think it's, you know, so, so I, I thought that was very telling and, and apropos to show you because as guitar players, we see those boxes, the pentatonic box. Yeah. We can see, you know, almost if you turn the guitar, you couldn't do it. You have to sort of what you see yeah. looking down. But it's but a it's, it's a two D representation in my mind. It's a uh, it's flat, 
it's a grid like exactly like he drew with the dots and the frets. Um, right. And but that's where I stop. Like mine, mine's just a two D pattern of shapes. Um, but that's exactly what my point was. The that is where, where people might say, well, everybody's on a spectrum. And it, yeah. Okay, easy does it, pal, because you don't have <laughs> to deal with what I got to deal with. So, so I, to show you that, yes, you can do, you feel, you know, it's a parallel yeah. example. I'm showing you, you can see to a point, right? As we can all sort of relate to a point, but the periphery, the other stuff is what people don't understand. Well, and that's exactly my yeah. point is that I found right. it fascinating that because I thought he was going to start talking about how he sees music on his base and it would be just wildly different than the way I see it. But no, the starting point is exactly the same. And then it blossoms into something completely unique to him. Um, yeah. But to, you know. Yeah, I think that's what happened to, and if you remember, this is many, many years ago, but it was almost overnight where we, you and I were jamming. You remember me coming to you and I just started tapping like a wizard? Like, yes. Yeah. Of course I remember. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. And I, so that was the one time that I took what goes on in here and, 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 drew that those yeah. shapes yeah yeah and it just and i didn't know what the hell i was doing but it sounded really good yeah yeah and so it was it was so savantish to be able to take that thought and put it into practice right it's not how others would put so you have to find your own ways to navigate through it otherwise I'm well and it's in, it's journey. interesting because I, I think back to when we were in college and we were in a band and we were jamming all the time and yeah, the, everyone knew, oh, well, Doug's got this, you know, this thing. Um, and so we always wanted to put you front and center to do cool solos and stuff like that. Um, but at the same time, you were savantish in some aspects and then still uh, like very basic in others. Like it wasn't, you're suddenly a master of guitar. You You have this mastery in this one area that mm -hmm. is just, way out of proportion with everything else. Whereas I back then was very mediocre to say the least and still learning just the regular progression. Like, all right, well, I know how to do these chords. I know what they mean. I know the basic pentatonic box and nothing else. Uh, and it took me years and years and years to get, to move all that up to a different level. Whereas you had pockets of just crazy uh, mastery. But that's how it works. Yeah. But that's how it works is, is extremes. Yes. Extremes. Because it comes with this disease is high intelligence. So the higher intelligence you have, you you will suffer in other areas. But you follow that normal trajectory. You start up playing and you you advance and you have, A, yeah. B, C, D, As you e, practice, I go you get A, better. I go X, M. Yeah. So, it, so yeah. No, it's fascinating. I, I'm sure that this particular video and, and topic may not be for everyone in our audience. Um, and you know, we, we, we apologize if this bores you and if, if it did, you're probably not even watching anymore. Um, but this is who are you talking to? Yeah, exactly. Who am I talking <laughs> to? I'm glad you brought this up because this is basically who we are. And, you know, we've got me as a, I, I hesitate to use the term norm, normal or, uh, but neurotypical. Neurotypical. That's the word. Um, and then you as a complete Neuro contrast. Um, and neurodivergent. A, neurodivergent. Oh, see, we're learning everything. Um, and it's a, it's a fascinating contrast. And it's amazing to see how that those, you know, two worlds could actually come together and create. Um, it's challenging. Yeah. Comes with its challenges. It comes with its challenges. As a matter of fact, you might have noticed as our viewers that we haven't put out as many videos recently. Um, and this is part of the reason, um, you know, we're, uh, you know, you're taking every day at a time and some days are better than other days. And uh, so there's, there's things you're working through and stuff like that. Um, so this is, this is fat, really fascinating to me. From a psychology point yeah. of view, yeah. Again, it's it's this awareness bid, and and uh, but I think it's something again everyone can relate to. Musicians can relate, yeah. again to a point, and then you can see where the divergence kind of kicks in. So and that that also might explain some of the differences in the way we view music. 
as we react, you know, we've been reacting to tons of songs uh, on this channel. And like in, in some cases, I feel like uh, I've been open to certain sounds and certain directions in music that you're, you just can't understand, or you don't, you know, you disagree totally on and vice versa. Um, and it seems like you've always been the one, you know, living, not living in the past, but that's where your, your, the bulk of your music love is in the past and anything after the nineties, not so much for you anymore. That's right. And I mean, I wonder how much of that has, has to do with, uh, your autism with the fact that maybe those years when you were listening to that music back then, it imprinted on you in a different way that new music can't. Sure. I mean, it's a neurodevelopmental disease. So imprinting would be a huge developmental factor. So yeah, absolutely. right. Just to let you guys know who may not know, um, unhinged actually started as a podcast about um, mental health. And, uh, you know, we did that for a few years and um, decided to, you know, try something different, which is why we started this music reaction channel. Uh, we're both very well, into music, music always came up with music therapy and all these amazing you know, neurotransmitters yeah. developing through the therapy. And so, yeah, it's music is a natural medicine, a natural yes. therapy. Uh, it takes you out of dis-ease of yes. diseases and puts you at ease. So yes. it's always going to work its way in. That's right. Hey, if you like this video, hit like, hit subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell so that you get notified whenever we come out with new videos. Right. All right. Until next time, rock and roll. Man burn. Mm -hmm.